Hi, welcome to Inside Bikes. Today we're riding the 2023 Ducati Scrambler Icon. So, at first glance, it looks quite similar to the Scrambler we've known for almost a decade. But actually, underneath, it's pretty much all new. Ducati actually say it's 80% new. So we've been riding it around Valencia for the World Press launch to see what it's all about. Now, Ducati have sold 100,000 Scramblers since it was introduced almost a decade ago. That is a staggering amount of motorcycles for any manufacturer, but especially one like Ducati, which you generally think is a more high-end, premium and niche manufacturer. And it's a model that's been really important, not only in selling lots of bikes, but bringing new people into the Ducati brand. It is a bike which, as one Ducati guy told me, is very democratic. It doesn't matter if you're young, you're old, you're big, you're small, you're experienced, you're inexperienced, male or female. The Scrambler is a bike that will put a smile on your face, guaranteed. And it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire using it as a little bit of a plaything, or a guy scrimping and saving to pay the PCP every month. This is a bike that defies class. It's a bike for all motorcyclists. Now they've gone very much with the policy of it's not broke, don't fix it. The Scrambler was never broken and they've not gone around fixing it. They've gone about refining it. It looks really, really spot on. Ducati is a premium manufacturer. So as you'd expect, the finishes and the quality of the componentry is great. It's not at the top, top end. It doesn't need to be. It's a really simple motorcycle. So those front forks, upside down forks, they're great. They're not adjustable, but they do the job absolutely fine. It's just a single front brake up front, but it's a Brembo system, really good quality. To be honest, we've been riding it for a whole day and never really felt that it was under brake. So fair play there, that all works fine. And they've cleaned it up, some nice LEDs, that lovely scrambler face to it with the daytime running lights. It looks pretty smart, it looks distinctive, and it stands out from what is basically an entry-level model. Talking of entry level, it's just under 10 grand, 9995, and you're getting quite a lot of bike for the money. In terms of styling, it does look in line with the Scrambler that we've come to know and love over the years. The original bike, remember, was inspired by the 1962 Scrambler, a bike that was designed for the American market, and it's still got that sort of Californian cool vibe around it. There are actually nine colors. More to the point, there's, there's, there's three standard colors. So um, there's the red, the black, and this one, which I think is definitely the strongest color, the yellow, which to me, brings back the sort of 60s vibe on it. But there are sort of really clever, they've got six additional colors which you can buy as a kit. So we were riding around in the jade green color option and there's a variety of greens and blues and reds that give you the opportunity to change it at home. So they say the kit will take around 45 minutes to change and you've got the front mud guard, you've got the finishers around the indicators there, the tank cover, the rear fender, and there's a little color-coded tag on the wheels, which you can get as part of a kit and you can upgrade it. As well as this base icon model, there are two higher spec Scrambler 800s on this platform. They're called the Night Shift and the Full Throttle. And there's also gonna be three Scrambler 1100s coming later in the year. The TFT Dash is also new. It's offset to the right, which might upset your OCD a little bit, but they've shaped it to fit the retro lines, even though the 4.3 inch screen is ultra modern and it's in the style of other more expensive Ducatis. It's a good system and doesn't have a cluttered switch gear for you to use. The chassis is pretty much all new. It's still that tubular trellis steel frame, but the subframe now bolts on and the swing arm's also new. Suspension comes from Kayaba and although it lacks adjustability, barring preload on the rear, it works well enough. The wheels are also new, 18 inch at the front, 17 inch at the rear, and they're shod with well-proven Pirelli MT60 RS tires. They look the part with their off-road style block patterns, but as we've known for a long time, they're just a really good all-round street tire. Now we spent a full day riding this bike, mostly on mountainous roads, but also in and around the city of Valencia. And it's such an easy bike to ride. It's got a relatively low weight and a, a low seat height. The seat height is 795 millimeters, but there's a high and a low seat option. It's quite firm. It, it was comfortable for most of the day, but as we got towards the end of the day, I did find myself, you know, wanting to stretch my legs a little bit. And it's light too, 170 kilograms, 
185 when you put the fuel in it. And to be honest, it feels really light, really agile, and it's dead easy to ride around town. You know, those big bars make it really easy to lever and, and turn through tight traffic. And actually, on the open road, look, you're not buying this to be a track day bike, but it can hustle. It can definitely hustle around those tight and twisty roads. Now it's a bike that is really more about the feels than it is about the actual spec sheet, but it has got lots of feels. One of the really key things is that it's got an air-cooled engine. Now that's something of a rarity these days, but the Ducati guys were telling us that it really was so critical that they were able to keep with the traditional air-cooled Desmo two-cylinder, two-valve engine. Just over 800 cc, makes just over 70 horsepower. Those are pretty impressive figures for an air-cooled bike that's meeting the Euro 5 emissions. It's four kilograms lighter than the previous generation Scrambler. A lot of that's been by using a smaller battery, but they've also worked on the clutch and they've worked on the sump and they've taken big savings there as well. Another thing they've worked on is heat management. Now the older Scrambler were a bit notorious for being really hot in traffic. They say it's better, they've rerouted the exhaust and they've done some things with the, with the mapping. It is still really hot in, in traffic. Now we have been riding it in Spain. I would caveat it's been about 30 degrees ambient temperature, but there's a lot of heat comes up through the seat and down through the exhaust. I believe it is better than before. Would it put me off buying one in the UK? Absolutely not. But just to put it out there, it still is quite hot if you do ride a lot in traffic. And I can see this being used a lot in cities because it is a great, cool urban commuter bike. One of the biggest changes to this is something that you'll never see, and that is that Ducati have gone to a ride-by-wire throttle. The old Scrambler was one of the few bikes that still had an old-school throttle cable. This has got an electronic ride-by-wire system, and what that means is that they're being able to load the bike with the latest electronics. So it's got two ride modes, sport and road. It's got traction control, which can be adjusted or turned off. It's got corner ABS and you can set it up with a quick shifter too. It works really well. The two riding modes, I did prefer in road mode, it just had a little bit more, it was a little bit less aggressive at the bottom end, but actually both are perfectly good and work really, really well, as you'd expect from a Ducati because their electronics are absolutely spot on, on on all their bikes these days. At the end of the day, Ducati say this bike is fun, easy to ride with a great personality, and it's hard to argue about that. It truly is. One of the great things about this bike, it is simplicity on two wheels. And that, for me, is the essence of motorcycling. It's a bit like a Harley Sportster. It's just so simple, it's beautiful. It is great fun to ride. It doesn't matter whether you're experienced or inexperienced. It's got loads of personality. There is nothing that touches that old Ducati L-Twin motor. The biggest criticism I can throw at this bike is also the biggest compliment I can throw at this bike. It doesn't feel that much different to the previous generation Scrambler. Now that's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing because the old one wasn't broken. It was a great, simple, fantastic little motorcycle. This is just more of the same. It's a little bit more refined and it's just a little bit more modern. I think Ducati have done a great job. We're gonna go off, we're gonna write a review. You can read all about it on Inside Bikes. Until next time, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and see you later. Thank you.